show, Paul Rodriguez Recon Athlete, Paul Rodriguez Show. We try to have him on every week because uh, this man, he, he's very knowledgeable, and he's family. What up, Paul? And how is everything going with y'all? Doing great, Paul. Hi, uh, Paul, I, I really like the, the video setup that you've had. Uh, uh, what is, is inspired the makeup? I love the American flags and just like how you're set up. I don't know. I, I like, I like the, I like the Paul Rodriguez show set up. I, I appreciate uh, that. About it real quick. Well, I mean, I got to give a shout out to uh, Papa Romeo. He was the uh, interior decorator on that front. Uh, just, you know, showing the Americana, showing the love to the great state of Texas yeah. where we represent. But uh, yeah, I got to give a big shout out to my producer as well. Producer James for getting all the graphics set up so we can give, you know, the shout out to flex ATX powered by the horn, which we're very gracious to be here week in and week out. Yeah, on the horn airwaves, you feel me? I, I'm sure the people that are at the Dripping Springs Rouse game have gone into the game by now. But earlier we had Del Valley wide receiver Braylon James on. Just going, he's a sophomore and a half, mm. as that calls him. But, but hadn't even played a snap of his junior season. And, you know, finally, you know, I, I want to say the big one came. Around here it feels bigger with getting an offer from UT. But already having from an offer from Ohio State, Yep. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Braylon's uh, trajection? I think Braylon's ceiling is uh, still yet to be met. I, I mean, we've kind of have him rated already in that upper echelon five-star tier. And I know a lot of the private coaches are kind of pushing for him to kind of get that accolade as well. But, you know, all that all that stuff really doesn't matter. What it matters is his ceiling. And I think we haven't seen that quite yet, but – for him being such a big body frame and, and the work ethic, I think that's what exudes really for him as we see him training, you know, in all these camps and all these seven on seven tournaments. So I just, you know, giving him the big shout out and giving him the love is uh, something we, you know, we like to do on our show and we've routinely seen y'all do that on flex. Yeah, Paul, there was a, there was an article that came out or, or an interview or, or, or something about Coach Saban talking about uh, if a player has transferred schools multiple times in high school, he doesn't want them because um, it shows he hasn't come from adversity. Braylon transferred schools, but it didn't work out the way that I think he planned it to. He was the number one guy at Stony Point as a freshman, mm -hmm. transferred to Del Valley, maybe to be maybe to play more of a Scotty Pippen role to Caleb Burden, get, get kind of some of that coverage taken off of him and put on Caleb. Then Caleb gets hurt and doesn't play. And again, he was the number one guy, and here he is sticking with it after a Del Valley season that didn't go that way. What do you think that says about Braylon and overcoming adversity, being being the number one guy at Stony Point, going to Del Valley, um, expecting to play with Caleb Burden, but but not and still, and still producing the way that he did last year? So I'm going to break down your question into two parts. The first part being addressing Coach Saban's uh, assessment, and then the second part, how he'll be you know contributing to Del Valley and what it could have been with Caleb. So getting to Coach Saban, um, I'm nobody. I'm just a regular guy with a small microphone. But I think if Coach Saban saw a highly recruited athlete who could complement his team to win national titles, I don't think he's really going to care what schools he went to in high school. That's the first part. The second part is for, for him to come in from Stony Point and then go to Del Valley and, and seeing what was there, there was a, a very bright spot for Del Valley going in. But I think he's lucked out. I think he has the better end of the stick now. With, with Coach Acosta coming in from IMG yeah. Academy and him and having the resources. I think that's what's being missed is that we're already seeing Coach Acosta implement his program at the Pop Warner level. And he's also had, he also has an ear and an eye for social media. He is extremely active on Twitter, which is a great uh, component that we have for the recruiting aspect. So I think Braylon's going to do just fine. I think he's going to be, you know, the, the big man on campus at Del Valley and also, all of the different types of programs that Del Valley will be able to have with Tesla coming in. And, you know, Tesla's already branding with the young people who are signing on their national signing day. So, for Braylon, I think he's lucking out. Could It would have been fun to play with Caleb, sure. But who knows? If he gets his way and Caleb gets his and Quinn gets his, maybe they'll be at Ohio State together. But, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, a Paul Rodriguez, Paul Rodriguez show on the phone. We were going to talk about Jaden Blue, uh, you know, um, I guess opting out of his senior year on the varsity level. Um, yeah, of course, the University of Texas committing again. Like, we've been talking a lot about college football. We are a high school football show. But, you know, this kid is a junior. Well, going into his senior season and already decided not to play. What are your thoughts? I think we've seen, especially locally, I think we've kind of seen the junior year be somewhat of a, you know, a, a dark cloak because 
We saw what happened to Caleb. We, you know, we saw what happened uh, uh, to Lake McRee in his junior campaign. And so yeah. it's, it's almost like maybe it's a mm-hmm. smart thing to kind of sit out your senior season if you already have a commitment going into college. And so maybe it's not a bad idea, but that's just my short take on it. Uh, Paul, another guy, another guy we were going to talk to uh, was a Henderson defensive lineman, Ooh, Cedric Roberts, picking yeah. up that Boston College offer. What do you think it is? Uh, are, are, would you agree with me when I say that both of the HHSs, Hutto High School and Henderson High School, are just are just factories in terms of producing Division One defensive linemen? Man, you better you better believe that is a fact. Uh, for for him to get that that offer uh, to Boston College tells me one of two things: one, he can play big time ACC football, and two, he has the grades to go play at anywhere in the nation. With that being a Catholic private school, so. Uh, the, the sky is the limit. We also saw another young player that kind of started the same way with uh, uh, with Caleb Brown, I believe, who's now at LBJ. And he had that yeah. big offer from Boston College that came in early. And then this, the dominoes just started falling one after another. So it's, it's exciting to see Cedric also get that love at Hendrickson. Uh, I also want to give a quick shout out to, because I just, I just think it gets overlooked sometimes, but Nico Hall out of Aikens picking up offers from Ole Miss yes. and A and M this week. Shout out to that big man getting it done down there at Aikens. So we guys, there's just so much great talent in the Austin area. If you're a skilled player or if you're a, you know one of the big uglies in the mix doing hand to hand combat in the trenches, it's a fun time to be alive in ATX. Yeah, Nico Hall by the way on flex next week on the show. Ooh, so stay yes, tuned for that, Zach. And, and Paul, I saw on social media, I saw a post about the about the dead period being being over. Um, do you have any news about that, and then what that means for recruiting? Yeah, I mean, we're we're seeing right now if these young people are dropping their basically their their world tour of what schools they're going to be visiting, and that's basically what that means. Since the dead period is over, these young people at D one schools can now go officially visit or unofficially visit uh, to those campuses and kind of get the real proper, I think, recruiting aspect of, of what goes on uh, in those in those ranks. But that's basically it is now that the deadlift period is over, they can physically go to the campus rather than communicate by Zoom or snail mail or phone calls. Okay, Paul Rodriguez, we appreciate you talking to everything between <laughs> uh, uh, Braylon James and Jaden Blue and I don't know, uh, I don't know. Scar- strawberry red, I don't know. Well, Jaden Red. Jaden Red. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it. Paul, thank you. Uh, as always, before we let you go, are you shouting out to anybody? Hey, man. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love what y'all are doing, man. Love the – appreciate the shout-out. <laughs> shout-out to Flex ATX. Go like, subscribe to everything they got going on. It's gold, people. Trust me when I tell you. I just got a small mic, but, hey, I'm going to rock with it like Nas. One mic, baby. Hey, turn up, Paul. <laughs> Paul Rodriguez, Paul Rodriguez Show, Recon Athlete. Paul, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, gentlemen.